So in less time than you normally spend browsing for something to watch on Netflix, I'm gonna tell you about 10 Netflix movies that are excellent watches that you've probably missed. This particular list features a wide range of genres. We've got some really great dramas, some off the wall action movies, and quite a few things in between. This video is sponsored by Raycon, and I'll be telling you more about them later in the video, but right now I wanna talk about my number 10 pick, which is an Indonesian action flick that is absolutely bonkers, The Big Four. Now this is a Netflix original, at least it is here in the US, and this is done by the same folks that did Headshot and The Night Comes For Us, two movies I've recommended highly on this channel before, and you can catch those on Netflix right now, and they're all insanely violent and over the top. But The Big Four does the same outlandish violence in a sort of Looney Tunes fashion. The fight choreography and some of the blood and guts effects are just fantastic in this movie. But some of those other movies, like The Night Comes For Us, are filmed much more like a horror movie. They're dark, they're intense, they're gritty. The Big Four is kind of an action comedy with just over-the-top violence galore. Now the reason this one's at the back is because I don't think it's as good as some of those other movies I mentioned. This one is really for people who love this genre. If you love movies like The Raid, The Raid 2, which is also on Netflix, and Headshot, The Night Comes For Us, then this is another fantastic entry in that genre. But if you're not into those, I'm not sure The Big Four is going to be the one to check out first. And the big four was from Indonesia. My next pick is from Spain, but it's worth noting that all of the foreign language movies on this list have either subtitles or a good dubbed version on Netflix. If you haven't really gotten into the foreign movies on Netflix yet, many of them, not all, but many of them have very good dubbed versions where the voice acting is pretty solid, at least compared to what you probably used to. That said though, my next pick is Below Zero. This too is a Netflix original and reminds me a lot of Assault on Precinct 13. The story here revolves around this heavily armored prison transport vehicle. I hesitate to say truck because it really is more of a giant bus. It gets stranded out in the cold, and when I say cold, I mean extreme cold temperatures, and one of the guards is left defending it, trying to hold all these prisoners in place. There are some fantastic sequences in this one, but what surprised me the most is that the story actually develops pretty solidly in this one for this type of a movie, and goes to a fairly dark place that's pretty heavy. And this stars Javier Gutierrez, who's one of my favorite Spanish actors, not just because he's good, but because he picks really really interesting projects to take part in. There are several movies starring him on Netflix and I enjoy almost all of them. All right, now my number eight pick on this list was a big budget sci-fi release almost 10 years ago now, but it was largely underappreciated and it's worth noting that it was just recently added to Netflix, Riddick. This is a man who sees in the dark. So watch out for surprise attacks. What is it? Now this is the third installment in the Riddick series starring Vin Diesel, and personally, it's one of my favorites. I do like Pitch Black, the first one, and did not like the second one really at all, but this third installment actually has a lot more in common with Pitch Black. And I'll be honest, this very much feels like a Sci-Fi Channel original movie, if you know what I'm talking about, but it's kind of like one of those done on a top-notch level. Like, it's the godfather of Sci-Fi Channel original movies. Now, again, this came out in theaters. It's not a made-for-TV movie, but it's so much cooler than a lot of Vin Diesel movies, mainly because the story's interesting, and they put this Riddick character in some unusual survival scenarios, and then visually, this movie's just got a stunning look to it, especially for a Vin Diesel sci-fi action movie. It actually looks pretty incredible, so if you passed on it, I highly recommend checking it out, but honestly, if you're a fan of Vin Diesel movies at all, this is one of the best he's done in a while. My number seven pick on this list is a peculiar pirate movie from South Korea that actually goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the pirate movies made here in the U.S. The Pirates, The Last Royal Treasure is an action-packed pirate movie from 2022 that I know a lot of people missed on Netflix. This too is kind of an action comedy, but it's not silly slapstick over the top. It's just got some nice levity to it, but it is packed with action. Again, fantastic fight choreography. A lot of it takes place on these 
old pirate ships, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, the production level here is not quite up to that of Pirates of the Caribbean, but for a Netflix original that I know a lot of people just never even heard of, it comes damn close. And just the fact that it's South Korean and has a completely different aesthetic than a lot of other pirate movies, the Pirates earns a lot of points there, and it goes over the top and goes into some goofy directions. But again, it's got that fun sense of levity to it that is pretty unique, not just to this movie, but to action movies from South Korea. Ben Kingsley and Oscar Isaac both star in my next pick, which is an amazing movie about the capture of one of the most notorious Nazis of all time. In Operation Finale, Ben Kingsley plays Adolf Eichmann, one of the architects of the Final Solution, one that escaped to South America after World War II, and this is the story of how he was brought to justice. Not only is this an interesting historical story of how this event unfolded, but you also get some incredibly interesting perspectives from different characters in this story. I don't want to give too much away here, but this is a slow burn. It's fairly slow paced, but the performances and dialogue are all top notch. I mean, you're dealing with some heavy hitting actors here and they're doing incredible work. And the way that this was written and sort of the way that this story is presented to you does raise a lot of questions that I thought were very thought provoking, but you do have to be pretty patient with this one. I mean, this is not the only World War II movie on this list. Technically, this is post World War II, but it's still a fantastic one. I know history buffs will love and anyone that's patient that wants to see some incredible performances. This is going to be the movie for you. It's worth mentioning the full list of all the movies I'm discussing here can be found in the top pinned comment down below, not the video description. Now before moving on with the rest of the movie recommendations here, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Raycon. Whether you're looking for a pair of everyday earbuds like mine, low latency gaming headphones, or a speaker with a battery that will last all night, Raycon's got you covered. And yep, Raycon's start at half the price of other premium brands. And they're loaded with premium features. I mean, my everyday earbuds come with different sound profiles like pure sound, balanced sound, and a based boosted mode, plus really cool features like noise isolation and awareness mode, which is particularly good if you're gonna be jogging out in the streets, you can still hear what's going on around you. Speaking of jogging though, the thing that's really great about Raycons is they stay in place. It really doesn't matter how active you get, they don't fall out of your ears, and the sound quality is fantastic. Obviously music sounds great, podcasts are great, and I even use these to edit my videos sometimes. And Raycons are incredibly durable, they're gonna hold up to sweat. They'll even hold up to getting run through the washer if you leave them in your pocket. So if you're ready to buy something small that has a big impact, just go to my link in the video description below or just type in buyraycon.com, that's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash flick connection to get 15% off your Raycon order. And even if you know you're gonna love your Raycons as much as I love mine, Raycon still wants to make sure you're going to enjoy your purchase. So they offer easy and free returns and even buy now, pay later options. So again, go to that link in the description or just type in buyraycon.com slash flick connection to get 15% off your Raycons. It's a great deal, but speaking of great stuff, let's talk about the rest of the movies on this list. Now we're gonna go back to South Korea again for a new release Netflix original that is one of the most terrifying movies I've seen on Netflix in quite a while, Unlocked. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not an intense horror movie, but it is a nail-biting thriller about this young woman who loses her smartphone and the wrong guy picks it up. I mean, it is truly terrifying to see how easily this woman's phone is hacked, and then the lengths that this man goes to to terrorize her are absolutely awful. Now, again, don't get me wrong, while this movie can be intense at times, it's not so intense that it's gonna put most people off. This is actually a pretty accessible movie. If you haven't really watched many movies from South Korea, I'm not sure this is gonna be the one to start with because there's so many fantastic ones, but if you've been a fan of a lot of the South Korean movies that Netflix has been adding over the past few years, Unlocked is one of the best I've seen in a while. Now my number four pick was one of my favorite Netflix originals released last year. However, I'm acutely aware that some people did not like this movie, Beckett. There was an accident with the car. Where's my girlfriend? April. Now I'll start by saying one of the things I loved about this movie is that it felt very old fashioned and it felt 
successful in that regard. I also appreciate when movies like this are done by first-time directors, just like this one was. But in this movie, John David Washington plays a man who is hunted down by people who he doesn't know, and he's not exactly sure why. To me, this felt a lot like The Fugitive, but done on a smaller scale. And John David Washington is fantastic in this movie. He's one of my favorite up-and-coming actors. I think he just kind of nails most of what he does, and Beckett was really no exception. But I do get that it's kind of an odd structure. It doesn't feel quite right. Yet, if you're fans of a lot of movies from the 70s, old Bronson movies, things like that, this felt like it belonged in a similar wheelhouse, and I found it to be really refreshing. It didn't have any major twists and turns that just blew my mind, and I think that might be where some people felt like it feels a little bit unfinished, but for a movie about a guy on the run that has plenty of mystery and some solid action and that's shot really well, again, for a first-time director, Beckett just really surprised me in terms of Netflix originals. Okay, I said I had another World War II movie on this list, and it's one of the newest to hit Netflix, and also one of the biggest to hit Netflix in recent memory, Narvik. This is supposedly about one of Hitler's first major defeats in the war. It focuses on a small Norway town where much of the iron ore needed for the German army was mined. Well, the Norwegian folks who live there decide to fight back, and it goes on for quite a while. There's a fantastic sequence on a train bridge, and the movie is just shot very well. The story's told incredibly well, and it's an interesting World War II story that I've never heard of or seen before. As I said, there's a great dubbed version if you don't like reading subtitles, but either way, if you love World War II movies, this is a fantastic one. It, too, has kind of an old-fashioned feel to it, it, but looks new and fresh. This is actually a 2022 release that just recently hit Netflix. Again, history buffs, this is going to be the one for you, but just anyone who loves solid World War II action, this is going to be a must watch. My number two pick is another top notch Netflix original from just last year The Stranger. The whole operation hinges on you getting closer with it. I don't know, you can know this. Don't find yourself in terrain that you're not familiar with. This too is based on a true story. It takes place in Australia. Now with this movie, I actually think it's best to know what's going on. You can find it out by reading the synopsis or researching the true story that this is based on. But in this movie, Joel Edgerton, one of my favorite actors, is playing an undercover cop who's trying to cozy up to a suspected killer and coerce a confession out of him. Now, if you saw Blackbird on Apple TV, a series that I think is insanely fantastic, then The Stranger actually has a very similar setup but in an incredibly different mood. To me, this movie felt so real and raw. It feels as if the cameras are just sort of spectating what's happening. And the storytelling actually never really holds your hand with the stranger. It can be a little bit disorienting, which is why I think it's best to know where it's headed, because some of the tension is much more effective when you know what's actually going on. And The Stranger informs you as to what's going on fairly slowly. There's never this really gigantic reveal or anything like that. But my goodness, if you like slow-paced, pitch-perfect crime movies, The Stranger is one of the best I've seen all year. But one of the most pitch-perfect crime movies I saw in 2018 just got added to Netflix not even 24 hours before me releasing this video, Dragged Across Concrete. There's a reason. I'm sitting behind this desk running things, and you're out there with a partner that's 20 years younger than you. Now, this is from director Craig S. Zoller, director of Bone Tomahawk and Brawl and Cell Block 99, two other movies I've highly recommended here on this channel over the years, so I'm excited to finally be able to tell you that Dragged Across Concrete is on Netflix. Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn both star in this as a couple of cops. This movie takes a look at police brutality in, I think, a refreshing way, in a way that doesn't seem too heavy-handed. It's actually fairly nuanced and interesting. But it's also a heist movie with these bizarre villains and these fantastic side characters. It is slow-paced, but here, the dialogue is absolutely fantastic. The way that I've described this movie over the years is it feels kind of like Tarantino. Not as colorful, not as unrealistic as Tarantino. In fact, it feels fairly grounded, like it could take place in our reality, but still has this funky Tarantino vibe that I absolutely love. 
This one is a little long, it's a little slow, but I enjoyed the vibe of it so much that it really is a fantastic watch. If you loved his other movies, Bone Tomahawk and Brawl in Cell Block 99, you owe it to yourself to see this one. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring another video. Don't forget to click their link in the description below or subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode and you will see me on the next one.